Good afternoon, this is John St. Clair and I'm in the office of Patricia Reynolds at the University of Mary Washington College of Graduate and Professional Studies. I've been doing a series of office chats asking our faculty how we can meet the needs of individual school children in today's current uh, standards-based environment. Professor Reynolds, how can we meet the need of our multicultural uh, changing student population here in Northern Virginia? Well, uh, the uh, Northern Virginia area poses some very, very unique uh, population uh, dynamics for uh, the schools here. Uh, in 1990, President Clinton declared uh, Fairfax County, Virginia, which is uh, the county that sits just south of Washington, D.C., as the most multicultural county in the United States. And uh, at that time, the population was fairly well uh, concentrated in that uh, right outside of Washington area. But the subsequent years have uh, shown that the population is on the move, and it has moved into many of the rural and suburban districts that sit uh, within the 45 to 50 mile radius of Washington, D.C. This has had an incredible impact on the school systems. The school systems, first of all, uh, were not prepared for the kinds of uh, language groups that they were going to be teaching. And uh, it was uh, simultaneous with the standards-based environment that came into the schools that required that all children be tested on state standards testing. So there were, there were two dynamics that came together that created some serious issues for the, the school districts in this regional area. Um, how do you go about addressing these needs? Well, one of the very first things that uh, needs to be addressed is the fact that all teachers are ESL teachers now. That it's not just a uh, teacher who pulls children out of the classroom. It's a teacher who understands that they have culturally and linguistically diverse children sitting in their classrooms and they have to make an effort to find a way to scaffold the instructions so that the child has access to the content material that they will subsequently be tested on in the standards testing. Secondly, we have had to become a much more proactive uh, educational communities um, to deal with some of the uh, social and uh, family issues that are brought to the table by uh, families that are living in extreme poverty and families that are um, who have statuses that may not be legal um, and uh, that has also posed an, an issue. Another area that we have noticed a uh, need for some support is in the health care service areas uh, because we want all of our children in school to be healthy and to be happy and to be able to um, participate fully in their educational opportunities but um, if they don't have correct health care health care and dental care and uh, food available to them, they, uh, that, will, that will be an issue for them. You mentioned earlier that uh, uh, all teachers are ESL teachers. Here at the graduate school, the school children of yesterday are today's uh, college students. Do we need to address, do we need to take into consideration the second language nature of our adult learners as we teach these graduate students? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, one of the largest growing populations in the United States right now is known as the Generation 1.5. We refer to them as the Generation 1.5 because they have one foot still in the home culture and about a half of a foot into the, uh, the, the U.S. culture that they are trying to achieve in. And uh, they have had an enormous impact on higher education here in just, I would say, probably the last four to five years where the colleges and universities throughout the United States are struggling. How can they meet the needs of these students? They still require language support. 
they, but they have graduated from U.S. high schools, and they graduated successfully from U.S. high schools. But when they cross into higher education, they end up having uh, some serious uh, language issues that oftentimes uh, the schools that they're attending don't understand. Um, there are many English language institutes now that are available to students at uh, higher education and uh, there are uh, programs that are designed to bring that uh, uh, one generation 1.5 into the mainstream of what's going on on our college and university campuses. As uh, I sit here uh, wondering as a math professor uh, how I could uh, best serve these students, I'm wondering uh, how would I, as a professor, what, what kind of training, what kind of reading, uh, how could I uh, develop myself professionally uh, to better serve these students? Well, first of all, you would have to take a look at your syllabus and decide whether or not there were enough opportunities in that syllabus for students to have a variety of different options with regard to responding and giving you feedback to demonstrate that they know they have the knowledge. Um, oftentimes a professor just has one assignment on a syllabus and uh, for a second language learner it may be out of their reach. They have the content knowledge but they can't demonstrate it. The use of uh, visual type of uh, 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 presentations and things that that might not have to write use the the written language would be a much more viable way of demonstrating their their ability to access the content information that you want that's what you want you want the content information so uh, just as we differentiate instruction to meet the various learning styles of students say in terms of uh, Gardner's Multiple Intelligences or Bloom's Taxonomy. This is another way that students are different from each other and unique and have their own needs and, and we need to address these sorts of needs also in addition to the various learning styles and, and other uh, differences. Absolutely. And it's not even a case of uh, they're not being intelligent. It's simply that they're having to function in a language that is not a native language to them. And generally, they're about five years behind most of the, their counterparts when it comes to language development, and that certainly needs to be taken into consideration. Professor, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you.